bring you the good news this morning from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Listen now for the word of God. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he crowd, cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. May our hearts be open to a deeper understanding of the Gospel of Mark. An elderly man was walking on the beach with his only grandson when a giant wave crashed on shore, sweeping the little boy out to sea. The man looked up into the heavens and said, Oh, Lord, this is my only grandson. How could you take him from me like this? My son will not understand. My daughter-in-law will die of grief. And almost immediately, another wave crashed upon the shore, depositing the boy at the feet of the old man. The grandfather looked again into the heavens and said, He had a hat. Blindness comes in many forms, and it is true. There are none so blind as those who will not see. It is this issue that Mark is addressing in the story of Bartimaeus. In fact, Mark has been addressing this issue of blindness in the last two chapters, not just physical blindness. More importantly, he is speaking to our insistence in remaining in spiritual darkness. In the Gospel of Mark, the issue of spiritual seeing, hearing, and understanding is a consistent theme. And it is a constant challenge for Jesus as he labors to open the eyes of those who would be soon carrying on the work he had begun. In chapters 8 through 10, we find two stories of the healing of the blind. Couched between these stories, Mark very cleverly places the narrative of Jesus traveling with his disciples toward Jerusalem. On the way, he tells the disciples three times of his coming death. Each time, the disciples respond inappropriately, showing that they have completely missed the point. The first prediction in chapter 8 has Peter rebuking Jesus. In chapter 9, the 12 argue among themselves about who is the greatest. And in chapter 10, as we explored last week, we find James and John insisting upon places of honor when Jesus comes into his glory. Now, keeping in mind that Peter, James, and John constitute the inner circle, it must be very disconcerting to Jesus that these guys still are not getting the big picture. They remain blinded by their own desires. For Jesus, it must seem like the future of God's kingdom is pretty shaky. Thus, this gospel presents us with two stories of blind men who gain their physical sight, bracketing a series of stories about disciples who are spiritually blind. The inner circle is singled out for special attention, for it seems their blindness is even more profound than that of the rest of the disciples. As we enter the story, we witness the disciples not only missing the point of Jesus' ministry, we see them yet again standing between someone needing Jesus and the healing that Jesus can bring. It's a familiar scenario with these disciples blocking the path to Jesus. You remember the children trying to make their way, only to be confronted by the disciples? Don't bother Jesus now. One wonders what it will take to open their eyes to the purpose of Jesus' ministry. There's a spiritual blindness here that is more dreadful than any physical blindness, and the disciples seem to be swallowed up in it. Luckily, with Bartimaeus, persistence pays off. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
The disciples are impatient. Oh, bother, not again. We'll never get out of Jericho if these wretched people don't stop dragging us down. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, you've got to give him credit. He certainly has persistence. Rather than Jesus walking over to the man, Jesus requests that the disciples call him into his presence. Now, I think Mark is making a significant point here. While we may not have the understanding at some level that any follower of Jesus should not block the path of one who seeks Jesus, we often forget that we are the ones who carry the responsibility of helping others come into that healing presence. Fortunately, Bartimaeus would not be silenced. But we must ask ourselves, what happens to all those who are broken and damaged inside that have no knowledge of the healing that can come in relationship with Jesus? Their hope can only lie in those of us who have experienced that healing. Because Bartimaeus has heard all the rumors of this man, Jesus, and the gift of healing he possesses, he refuses to keep silent. He keeps pushing. And the wall between faith and Jesus comes tumbling to the ground. When faith meets Jesus, all kinds of wonderful things can happen. Faith, even in the darkness, how does that happen? If the truth be known, the deepest kind of faith begins in the darkness. It is that moment of recognition that we are stumbling around, falling all over ourselves in attempts to make sense of that which will never make sense. It begins the moment when we recognize our need for something other than what is present in our lives. It's that moment when we know beyond the deepest sense of knowing that this is not as good as it gets, that there is something more available to us. It was this beginning that started Bartimaeus on the road to healing, his recognition that he did not want to remain in the darkness. That sounds like such a simple statement, doesn't it? I mean, I don't want to remain in the darkness. Who wants to live in the darkness? It makes no sense. We were created by light to be light. Life itself cannot be sustained without light. However, it is only too true that sometimes the road out of the darkness is filled with peril, challenging us to take risks that make us vulnerable requiring major life changes. People who are physically blind tend to remain close to familiar surroundings, a safe zone where they know the presence of everything, where there's a certain amount of control over their environment. You take a blind person out of their safety zone and place them in the middle of a strange environment with no assistance, and you have a recipe for disaster. If you've, ever been, if you've ever experienced being seriously disoriented for any period of time, you know what I mean. But Bartimaeus took that risk. He moved out of his safe zone toward Jesus, demonstrating that faith is first a step into the darkness, into the unknown. Bartimaeus had no way of knowing that this was his only chance to be healed, that this man Jesus was, in fact, on his way to Jerusalem to die. It was his desire for healing that drove him to boldly, even rudely, scream out for Jesus' attention. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus understood his need for healing. He had an obvious physical disability. The greatest disability associated with spiritual blindness is that it's so easy to initially ignore. Easy enough that very often we've convinced ourselves that all is well until one day, usually in the middle of a crisis, we realize that our spiritual resources are dangerously close to empty. Sadly, until our need is such that, like Bartimaeus, we are willing to be pulled out of our safe zone, we live our lives as the spiritually disabled. This, of course, brings up the inevitable question, will we, in fact, Want to be healed? Let's be honest with ourselves. Healing itself is the risk. To be healed would mean that the old excuses won't work anymore. There's a certain amount of safety surrounding the idea that we're somehow spiritually disabled in some way. Not much is asked, nor is expected of us. 
Bartimaeus knew that his life would change dramatically if his vision was restored. Yes, definitely for the better, but there would also be demands placed upon him that hadn't been there before. To experience the healing Christ can bring to our lives means most certainly that we will be presenting, presented with unending opportunities to be a source of healing for others. The question is not to be ignored. Are we willing to seek healing of our spirits even knowing the demands it will place on our lives? <coughs> I'm reminded of a scene from an episode of Monty Python's Life of Brian. A beggar was sitting by the side of the road holding out his cup saying, alms for an ex-leper, alms for an ex-leper. And Brian questioned this strange behavior. What do you mean, ex-leper? Well, I was cured. Who cured you? That, that Jesus fellow. Now I have to make a living, but all I've ever known how to do is beg. Well, why don't you ask him to make you a leper again? I don't think I'd like that. Maybe he could make me a leper during working hours. There are many things that stand between us and a life of wholeness that Jesus longs for us to live. It can be people. People we love who are well-meaning. People who love us but whose priorities are confused. It can be fear. Fear of doing something differently than we have done before. It can be pain. Pain that has been with us so long that to be without it would be like losing an old friend. And it can be that deadly disease of complacency. The fact that our lives are so comfortable that we live in the illusion that we have all we need. So the task I challenge you today with is identification. What is it that may be blocking your way? What do you need to shout down that is between you and freedom? Many, many things can keep us in darkness, and sometimes, even when light is offered, there are those who will find any excuse to remain where they are. And yet, there are also those who, no matter what the circumstances, will not allow anything to come between them and the warmth of joy-filled light. Bartimaeus knew where the light was to be found, and there would be nothing great enough or powerful enough to come between him and what he knew to be his destiny. Had he been hushed, lost his courage, had he returned to his proper place and behaved politely, he would have lived and died a blind man. Bartimaeus knew this was not acceptable. We each face our own demons, those things in our lives which prevent us from being all that we have been created to be. The question we confront this morning is, are those things which stare us down with intimidation that work to keep us silent more powerful than our need for Christ? Or will we find within us a spirit of Bartimaeus compelling us to scream out to God that we too might be healed? Bartimaeus found healing because he first recognized his need. He named his brokenness for what it was, and in that moment opened the door for the healing touch of Christ. His faith was enveloped in the assurance that healing was available and he would not be silenced. Jesus is also listening for our cries. His very ministry to the world was to bring God's healing to the brokenhearted, peace to souls filled with chaos, acceptance to the rejected, and forgiveness to the guilty. There is no dis-ease that cannot be brought before the healing Christ, and he waits for our call. Bartimaeus found healing. He could have returned home healed but unchanged. Instead, Bartimaeus knew his place was with Jesus, and he chose to follow. There is a certain obligation that comes when the light of Christ replaces the darkness that we've known. In fact, the knowledge of that obligation just might be the barrier standing in your way. Bartimaeus' choice to follow Jesus came out of one man's grateful response. We give because we've first been given. We love because we have first loved. The story of Bartimaeus is one of those many stories in the Gospels that seem to leave the ending to our imagination. Our once blind beggar disappears into history, leaving us to finish the story. 
Our story, too, is yet unfinished. Where do we go from here? Do we remain silent on the side of the road, lost in our personal darkness of sin, of grief, of guilt, resentment, or even self-destruction? What is it that might be keeping you from seeing the goodness of God's creation and the life that you have been given? When the opportunity for healing crosses your path, will you find the courage to move past those barriers and accept the grace that is offered through Jesus the Christ? Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the very image of one without anything to offer, anything to claim, is calling out to you to recognize the holiness of your creation and to demand without apology Jesus, Son of David, I want to be healed. Amen.